Hi right, guys, if you're usually here for my my wander content, this is something completely different. Uh, I've made a quick bot in Python that will read chat and detect a trade message, and then it will actually email it to me um, using SMTP Gmail server with SSL encryption. So I'm going to have my friend send me a trade request, um, and then we could see, see it test it out. So he sent me a trade request. This is constantly uh, scanning chat, and it will send mail. And if we bring over Gmail, you can see that this new trade request pops up. And this will actually like notify you on your phone, or if you set up Gmail notifications on your phone, you'll get this, and it just pastes the message in here. Um, so yeah, just a real short video. I'll go over the source code like like real quick. Um, First thing we do is we open the client.txt with the directory. So I literally just hard coded my directory. I'm not going to make this public or anything, so I don't care about making it um, uh, portable. So I just hard code my directory in there. And then I get the size in bytes. The reason I get the size uh, when I first started up is so that if the size ever increases, I know that there are new messages in client.txt. So essentially, if uh, size prime is larger than size, then we know that there has been a new message appended to client TXT. Um, so yeah, we have our new client. This is like client prime and, and size prime. Uh, these are just initialized to just like century values. And then this is our main loop here. We're going to sleep at a frequency. I think I have it at five seconds. You can probably put this up to like a minute. So it only uh, it stores a, a buffer of a minute long uh, trade requests and then it will email you in batches um, if you get a lot of trade requests in one minute then that might be what you want to do um, and then we're instantiating new client to open client so on the first the first iteration uh, client and client prime will be the same but each iteration of the loop um, it will be the most up-to-date client whereas this one is like a snapshotted version of when we first uh, started running the scripts and then the size, again, we're getting the size in bytes of the file at the directory. And this is updated every game tick as well, or every time there's a new message in chat. Um, and then we're just printing the new size for debugging purposes. And then if size prime is larger than size, then we our difference in bytes uh, is new size minus size. The reason we have we don't have to do absolute value here, even though we're talking with like dimensions, is that we're already checking that size prime is larger than size. And then we're using Python's um, dot seek which sets an offset byte value so and then the second argument you can do 0 1 or 2 2 being seeking from the end so we're basically getting the last byte at the end and then we're seeking at our tell which is basically getting that offset from where we just set our seek to minus the difference in bytes so essentially what this is doing going to the end of the file and then backtracking the difference so each snapshotted client.txt say there's five new messages it will go back that many messages and start reading from there this is more efficient so we don't have to read every line of client.txt every time or every five seconds or whatever our frequency is all we have to read is the difference between the two which will be minimal like very very minimal compared to the actual size and then new this is like raw text data we're going to read it line by line um, it's also important to note that Poe uses UTF-8 encoding. So, yep, and then we're setting size equal to new size. So after we've backtracked our seek, we can now set our size to the new size or size prime. And then we wrote a function called parse new, which is gonna parse our raw text data. Awesome, so we'll go up to parse new. What parse new it takes in new lines. This is that new. It's just raw text data, and then we're using just um, I don't know what this is called line comprehension, I guess, or objects. I don't know what it's called in Python, but a for each loop maybe. So we're gonna loop through um, for every line in new lines. We're checking if this substring is contained within the entire string. So hi I would is is in every trade message for the most part. Hi I would. So we're checking if that exists. Because we don't want just any PM. If you wanted every PM to email you, then you would just remove this part, and everything with the at from in it, which is a, a whisper, would be emailed to you. But I added this in just as like a, a check that it's from a trade site, right? 
and then we're composing our message. So to compose a message, you actually do a doc string, and then you just um, use pretty format and you just dot format line, and line is the current line in our for each loop. So like I said, we're going back, say we have 10 new lines from our snapshot version to our current version. We're reading each of those 10 lines. Are they a trade request and are they a, a whisper? If so, we're gonna format it like this with the current line that it's on, and then we're gonna send, wrote a send mail function to send it. Um, and this is where I had to like, I'm not like very good at this, so maybe I won't explain it the best, but send mail, we're gonna use SMTP with SSL encryption. And Gmail, if you go, you have to make a new Gmail account. If you set your settings to be um, allow like third party unauthentic unauthenticated access, something like that, then it will actually uh, it will actually work. If you just try to use any email, it will, it will tell you there's an OAuth error. Um, so yeah, just setting up the server. You could do localhost. I was using localhost just to test because this takes about 15 seconds just to send the email. So you wouldn't want to debug like this. Um, and then they have a built-in just send mail function, sender, receiver, and message. This has to be pretty formatted as a doc string. And the sender and receiver are just plain text. And then I use the, this is actually a Gmail feature. You can put a plus after your main thing and it will just change the, the inbox. But it will be the same, the same uh, email. So you don't have to make two emails. You can just make one and just set a different inbox tag. And then it just prints a debug that it sent mail. Um, you also have to use 465 for SSL encryption, and then that's that's really it. If there's like programmer gods that are, are watching, uh, please don't harass me. I didn't try too hard, but like at the same time, this isn't like this isn't really my my main thing that I do, like server stuff. So yeah, guys, have a good one.